There may not be any monsters under my bed, but you can believe there's finally one on my desk. And although I'm not scared of this monster, I've got a hard drive full of resource-intensive applications that should be shaking in their boots right about now. This monster is the Maxed Out M3 Ultra with the 32-core CPU and the 80-core GPU. With a wallet destroying 512 gigabytes of RAM and 16 terabytes of storage. And although it's one generation behind the newer M4 Max, we're going to see if age really is nothing but a number. Apple caused quite the kerfuffle online when they announced the new Mac Studio would come with the high-end M4 Max and the higher-end M3 Ultra, with many questioning if an Ultra version of last generation's hardware was actually an upgrade to the current Max chip. I have here with me both the Max and Ultra, along with some real-world productivity applications and games, to not only see how they compare to one another, but which one is better at what task to help guide anyone that is wondering which hardware is best for what they are going to use it for. Starting off the tests is the fan favorite, After Effects. I'm using the Adobe Test Project that I use to stress test all my hardware. First up, we'll check the render performance. The M3 Ultra starts off showing what it can really do. What is absolutely bonkers is that no matter how hard I push these machines, they remain whisper quiet. In fact, I don't think throughout any of my testing, I heard the fans come on at all. They are so quiet that I've considered downloading a fan control app to make sure they actually work and aren't broken out of the box. The M3 Ultra finishes the test in almost half the time of the M4 Max, at 1 minute and 42 seconds, while the Max completed it in 2 minutes and 57 seconds. I also threw in the M3 and M2 Max chips for comparison in the same test. Next up is playback speed. After Effects has never been known to be able to playback in real time without loading the project into available RAM first, no matter what kind of hardware you throw at it. RAM really isn't an issue with these two machines, with 512 and 128 gigabytes available respectively, but I wanted to see if I clear out all the cached frames and tried to playback before the frames were loaded, what kind of performance I would get at all the different resolutions. At full resolution, the M3 Ultra doesn't seem to outperform the Max with playback. In fact, it appears to play at a lower frame rate even though it is able to cache the frames into RAM faster than the Max, resulting in being able to playback in real time sooner. This means that if you don't press play right away, the Ultra can have the project ready for smooth playback much sooner than the Max. Switching to half resolution delivers similar results. This time, the Ultra is playing back at a nearly identical frame rate to the max, with both settling in at around 7 to 8 frames a second. And just like full resolution, the Ultra loads the project into memory slightly faster than the max. I really thought the Ultra would be better at this test, and at this point, I'm trying to figure out if it's a hardware or software thing creating such an unexpected result with these two machines. Switching to a third resolution is even more confusing to me than the prior two tests. This time, the Ultra struggles to catch up in both frame rate and the speed in which it loads into memory, making the Max come out on top for the test at this resolution. The same exact thing seems to happen at a quarter resolution as well, with the Max seemingly outperforming the Ultra at playback. The Max really holds its own through this test and seems to perform even better than the Ultra at lower resolutions. What I've gathered from these two tests is that um, working with compositions is going to be very similar across both machines, and the real difference is going to be in the render time of those projects. After these tests, I thought I would try to switch the rendering and effects to the Metal Mercury GPU acceleration setting to see if I could get a different result and better performance out of the Ultra. As you will see, nothing really changed with the performance and the Max had nearly the same or slightly better performance than the Ultra. I didn't speed through this part, so those that are interested can see the playback in real time. If you aren't interested, you can skip ahead about two minutes to the next test.
Next up is another popular request, Blender. I started with the good old reliable classroom render. I left all of the settings to their default and rendered 300 samples with the Cycles Render Engine. In short and sweet renders, the Max is still pretty amazing with remarkably similar performance to the Ultra. The Ultra finished in 11.15 seconds and the Max finished shortly after with 14.75 seconds. To really see a difference between the two chips in Blender, your workflow is going to have to require significantly more complex projects to render. To illustrate this, I cranked up the resolution to 4K and tripled the samples to get a render that was more taxing on both of these systems. Having a ton of unified memory is amazing when you work in a 3D environment. Both of these machines are a joy to work with when it comes to working in 3D, and the Max is a very capable chip when it comes to rendering, even if it's not quite as fast as the Ultra. I know that minutes add up over long renders, but for how much money you can save with the Max, it might be a small concession to make to save some cash. As expected, the Ultra comes out on top, finishing at 1 minute 58 seconds. But the Max is no slouch, finishing at a respectable 3 minutes 39 seconds. Stepping away from Classroom and Cycles, I'll be testing Particle Simulation Rendering in EV. The results here tell the same story. The Max is simply a very capable processor that is perfect for working in 3D and compositing and effects. If that is what you are looking for in a computer, you can't go wrong with the Max. If you want a computer that can push even further and render even faster, and you don't mind dropping a little extra dough, then the Ultra will definitely fit the bill. Now, let's step away from work for a moment and take a break with gaming. I just went for it with my first test benchmarking Tomb Raider. The Ultra is connected to a studio display, so I set the resolution to its 5K and the quality settings to Ultra. I was initially worried the 60Hz refresh rate would be a limiting factor for the Ultra, but turns out that wasn't a concern. For the Max, it is set to a MacBook's 4K resolution, so I can set it to 120Hz on that 16-inch panel but I'll be setting the Max to the studio display at 5K as well to see how it performs at both resolutions. I really was thinking the Ultra was going to get a solid 60 frames a second, even in 5K, so I was a bit surprised when it only averaged about 25 frames, maxing out at a little over 42. The Max managed to keep a steady 60 frames a second in 4K, only dipping a few times by about 2.5 frames a second. Next up, I flip-flopped them, setting the Ultra to 4K, while setting the Max to 5K. The real shock here is that the Max outperforms the Ultra in this gaming benchmark. I'm not sure if it has something to do with the game optimization, since the Ultra is so new, 
but it looks like currently the Max is running circles around the Ultra in this game, so I'll have to see if this is an anomaly by downloading and trying this test in a variety of different games for a future video. Lastly for this series of tests is Final Cut Pro. I tried two different tests with Final Cut Pro. I rendered and exported out this video, which in the interest of time I will just say that the extra encoders make a huge difference with the export time literally being three times as fast. So if you work with a lot of video and time is money, the Ultra gets it done significantly faster. The other test was a Magic Mask test. For some reason, when running Magic Mask on the Ultra, it didn't allow me to record the screen, so I had to shaky cam it. Here is another upset where the Max beats out the Ultra at analyzing the footage, completing the task almost eight seconds faster. So my final thoughts are a mixed bag. It's not that the Ultra isn't a really powerful chip, it's that the Max is just so darn impressive this generation. It really makes me think how awesome an M4 Ultra would have been if it were possible to make it. As it stands, the Max should be more than enough to make you very happy with your purchase and chew through just about anything you throw at it. That being said, who is the Ultra for? Someone who does a lot of complex renders in which time is a factor or if you work with large language models for AI, you'll definitely want the larger RAM options that the Ultra has access to. I'll take a look at more games in an upcoming video, but if you are a Mac user, you've come to not expect much on this front anyway. I'll also be testing large language models and prompt processing in the next video as well. In the meantime, if you're on the fence between these two studios, feel free to leave a question in the comments below and I'll be sure to help out the best I can. Thanks for stopping by the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.